Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of the Pick'ems for PBO Season 7 Neon Division. I'm here with Za. About to pick some games, ladies and gentlemen. We haven't gotten one wrong yet. <laughs> and uh, and I am, uh, as you know, I'm Aiden or St. Louis Solgaleos. And uh, yeah, we're here to pick the, pick the matchups for Week 2 and uh, see if we can... Uh, See if we can get some of these right. So uh, to start us off, we got the Chicago Chimchars versus the Kaborka Gengars. Uh, Zaz, start us off with uh, what you think about this one. Okay, so we saw Kaborka brought some interesting sets last time. He knows he's known to bring some off-the-wall things, but the base problems of the team still persist in that it's a very slow team, so we don't even really in-depthly need the booster speed valiant here we could see the the rare booster attack maybe agility set if you wanted to so on paper chimchar's team is just better like if you're just looking at it right so we got uh both dark rye and valiant outspeed everything and threaten pretty much everything on this team uh, again, again, I think I mentioned it in the team breakdowns from the beginning of the season. If we have Choice Band Valiant or we have Choice Specs Valiant in the middle of the game and we use that to damage the things that stop Darkrai and then we bring Darkrai in at the end of the game, like we get any damage on, uh, what's my man down here's name? Overquill. We're blowing through this team. Um, so that's... That's my first thought off jump, and then we have our only substantial removal. Like, we just had, well, no, we have Defog on uh, Corv, so that's a good one. But I definitely think that Gangars has a chance, assuming they play Raging Bolt, right? Because Mama Swine's taking a ton of damage from that Draco, but we really got to dance around the combo of Tinkaton and Mama Swine. So I think for Ga for Kaborka Gengars, who I do think is probably the underdog in this game, just based on the speed aspect, their win con is going to be just guessing right with Specs Raging Bolt. Like, Gengars, don't bring setup Raging Bolt. Bring something that can get in and out, get yourself some turns, get some predictions right, and then I think there's a way they can get through with that. But they're gonna have they're gonna have problems consistently coming in on Valiant because. That can pretty pretty much just click like some combination of thunderbolts and moonblast, and just be relatively okay because uh, Excadrill. If we're not running AB Excadrill, is mag maximum coming in like twice or three times on a moonblast. So off rip, if I'm just looking at it, I think this is like a Chicago sixty forty game fifty five. 45 something like that just based on the their two fastest things are well over everything gangers has and there's not any consistent switch-ins for all these things with any type of recovery yeah so the the lack of pivoting on kaborka side is definitely the thing that uh or lack of lack of speed is what i meant to say lack of speed is definitely what's gonna probably be their downfall here having nothing that's really faster than valiant or dark cry and nothing that's really able to easily get there without having to be choice locked um besides quack Ball, but even then i think that's probably going to take one um one or two aqua steps which is probably gonna be hard to get off especially because it's a slow king right there that just eats all of quackable's hits um so valiant and dark cry can can really pop off here um i think moltres um actually i lied moltres is not very good here um uh, However, the the slow king, the Tinkaton um, backbone can can be very good here. However, it does look like slow king is kind of taking up a lot of the the defensive um, like role in this matchup, uh, it, and it can be kind of overloaded with Overquill and, and Raging Bolt. So I could see uh, if Kaborka could take advantage of that and get some really hard hits off and whittle down that Tinkaton um, without letting it be able to really get any health back. Once that goes down. I think Raging Bolt and, um, yeah, just Raging Bolt can, can do a lot of things. Maybe an Alone Executor. He loves the Alone Executor. It's free. It's one of his favorite mons that he just absolutely loves to do things with. Uh, so, so I definitely watch out for that. Um, but I definitely do think this is in Chicago's favor. Probably again, like that 55, 45 or like 60, 40, uh, range. Cause it definitely is close, but I do think Chicago does have the, 
um, advantage here. And then with that, we move to... Did you give a final number? Yeah, 55-45 to... Or it's like 60-40. One of the... Like, in that okay, range. so we're in agreement on that, that one. Yeah. And then we move to the Boston Bulbasaurs versus the Carolina Titans. So so with this one, we see the, the obvious high-end power of Boston, right? Um, versus the terrain of, uh, of Carolina. I think that... Sneasler can go absolutely stupid here. Okay. It hits essentially everything for super effective damage and will be able to outpace everything. The only thing stopping it is Golden Go, but once that gets whittled down, I don't see anything that stops Sneasler from just clicking CC, Poison Jab, and, uh, and Throat Chop if it needs to, just over and over and over again um, without really anything to stop it. I think getting PZ chip down, because I don't know if you're going to be able to one-shot that unless you get a Sword Stance up. Uh, whittling that down a little bit, whittling down Golden Go. Uh, those are your two main tasks. And you can probably do that with Hazard, Samurott. Uh, just get it, like, lead it. Just click uh, um, Cease the like, one or two times. And then just whittle down with other, with your offensive breakers. It just... I don't I don't see a thing that really stops Nizler in this matchup. It is definitely very favorable um, for the uh, terrain team here. Yeah, I agree. Carolina Titans has a couple of things that there's like virtually nothing holding it back from just devastating everything. Uh, Sneasler can run fling, beat Golden Go, one SD throw chop. Like it can't really switch in. I mean, it can switch in it, but if it gets the prediction wrong, it has at most a couple of switch ins. The burial proc once if they want to run Colbert. Also, it's a really easy game for Heatran to just spam fire moves. Um, there's no downside to just Magma Storm here. Like, you're just Specs Magma Storm. What do they do? Um, because you have so these easy switch-ins on the mana feed. You don't want to let it get set up, but, you know, there's not a lot stopping again. It's just the Golden Go holding back Dragonite, even from just being Choice Band Extreme Speed, which kind of devastates a lot of these offensive guys. Then also, Dragonite with one Dragon Dance is real tough for this team to deal with. Like, that comes in at any point. And this is Kiram, who does not have Ice Shard. Like, it's not not going to be a good time for my man. And then um, even just Rillaboom, right? Like, we don't have a great... Again, Golden Go, the only thing stopping really just Grass Spam. Yeah. Because Kiram is probably going to be your win con, right? So, and Heatran, if you... We do want to keep in mind that Kiram can always win. So, like, DD Kiram here is fine. Mm -hmm. um, although Terra Fairy Uxie should probably be on the other team just as a failsafe against that. So we at least stop that. That'll pretty decently slow down that. And a combination of that and Heatran will slow down a, a, a Specs Kiram. And it'll be decent against the physical Kiram, but you probably don't want to... The, the physical Kiram is hard to make work with the Heatran here, right? But uh, I think most of the advantages are with Titans. Any of the advantages that Bulbasaur has is just because of the Pokemon, which is going to be the the uh, the situation most weeks with this team, right? There's like, Manaphy's not necessarily good in this matchup, except for the fact that it's Manaphy. Kiram's not great in this matchup, except for the fact that it's Kiram, right? So it's just yeah. their inherent tra traits. Um, we have no, no removal at all against Hisui and Samurott. So, like, the Titans leads, lead Sash, Hisui, and Samurott, and just attack twice. Yeah, it like, gets free, like, just free spikes. Yeah, you have, we have Heatran and Uxi, who both at will, and the Dunsparce, all three at will, can essentially put up the rocks. So, the Titans, your job is to make sure you don't get swept by Kiram. Essentially, I'm just going to say Kiram. Make sure you don't get swept by Kiram, and it's going to be tough for you to lose this game. So I'm going 65-35 to Titans. I think, I think I'm going to go even, even further than that and say this is probably like 75-25 to Titans. I think, yeah. I think this is so strongly in their favor. I don't... Like, if they... Like, like, yeah, there are there are things that can just take over a game, like like Kiram, and then maybe even like Namorous gets agility, right? Or does it? Yeah. Is it not? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Namorous could just click agility and like superpower things, which I mean, it makes it tough because of Heatran, but it's something that's there. 
Um, and so there are there are certain specific conditions you have to watch out for. But other than those, like there's not really much standing in the way of the Titans just doing kind of what they want to do, what this team is built to do, and just winning the the game. Yeah, the reason I would give them a... They, there are sets that Bulbasaurus can have. So, um... The Titans has a couple of defensive Pokemon, but he has to bring them correctly. So if we're Terra fighting Scarf Porygon Z, if you click the correct moves with that Pokemon, it decimates their whole team. You just yeah. have to be right. Like, you have to predict. So... Bulbasaur's is very reliant on prediction and setup. Uh, because so Titans can pretty easily get swept by DD Kiram. Like you, you need to you need to, you still need to run Earth Power for the Heatran. If it has a berry or a balloon, you have to proc that first. But if you EV it correct and you bring it out in the middle of the game, like he definitely has win cons. I just it's it's much harder for him to set it up. So Titans just needs to do, click ceaseless edge twice. Set up rocks with Uxie or Heatran, and then just attack. So, but Bulbasaur is, can, certainly can win, uh, but it's going to be a lot harder for him. Yeah. All right. And with that, we'll move on to the Richmond Raging Bolts versus the BC Litleos. And uh, Zah, go ahead and uh, pick where you left off from that last one. Okay, so we changed our rain team to a hail team. Interesting. Interesting we see this. So, let's the first thing we check when we have bundle, can we stop bundle? Um so Florges is okay if we're going to if we needed something to try to like be a switch in a bundle, uh full spadef just like leftovers Florges is fine. It probably takes like 40 35 from Specs Hydro Pump and they have to hit it. So that's a decent, we have a decent switch, and then we baton pass out, right? Um, we're not too, we're fine against Thunderous. Um, Thunderous can do some serious damage for Raging Bolt here. So if he hits Focus Blast, uh, the, his best answer to Thunderous is actually uh, Gouging Fire. Everything else, unless you want to bring Dusclops, is not going to uh, have a great time with that. So Raging Bolts, I excuse, yeah, well, Raging Bolt, the teams, uh, he, Raging Bolt isn't in this game, but it's just like, I've never seen a team named Raging Bolt, so it's kind of messing me up. I keep thinking it's on the team. Um, Raging Bolt's top two, like, immediate offensive threats are fine, but they have decent checks on Litleo. Um, how does Litleo, I mean, how does Raging Bolts beat Gouging Fire? Um, they really don't particularly well you have to predict something with uh you can come in on a dragon move and encore it with whimsicott i don't think whimsicott is that bad of a bring it can be decent you can always switch in on a predicted uh dragon dance mm -hmm. and maybe do something okay you can build a defensive arch this is not a terrible mixed arch game so you bring full defense like iron defense body press thunderbolt and uh Steel physical move or steel special move, whichever thing does more damage to Florges. And I think that's a pretty decent set you can run. And you can probably come in on Gouging Fire or like it, it can't really come in on you, right? Um, I think that's fine. I think that a Spothra could do something in this game. Assuming the uh you the hoop unbound comes in early and tear is out of its type. Greninja doesn't want a Dazzling Gleam, so you run the basic, you know, Protect, Calm Mind, two attacks set. I think that could be decent, and I think, uh, I don't know that you need the Stored Power set, you run Esper Wing, I think it'll get you through the, um, what's it name? Florges, decently well. Look at that set. Uh, but, just based on a talent thing, I think the BC Litleo's team is much better. Uh, we don't have a... We don't have any really sturdy knockoff thing. I still think... I'm going to say this. I, I, I said this about Mug's team. I think that this Hoop Unbound is better as Dark and you just spam knockoff. I really think it should just be Terra Dark and spam knockoff. Like, that would rock this team, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> I think I, I like Litleos just because their talent level is so much higher. And they have some pretty decent checks to Raging Bolts. 
best guy. Like, Satitan is almost never... It can get through, like, Mola, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I just... Um, I'm feeling Lit Leos in this game, maybe, like, 60, 40, 55, 45, something of that nature, because... All their win con, like they have some win cons, but they're gonna, they have to be very specific. And I feel like BC Lit Legos has to just like not plan for them for it to happen, essentially. Whereas they can just attack with Hoopa and attack with Greninja and they're just fine. Yeah, I think, uh, like, I, referring to that bundle, looking at things that can stop bundle, I think Hariyama with Thick Fat can act like an AV can actually be a really, really good. Like, check them out. I have no idea what those calcs are. If it's, like, you know, max HP with AV, thick fat, um, yeah, I have no idea what's not. Like. If it's not specs, like, if it's not specs, Hydro Pump against AV Hariyama, my head cannon is saying, like, 30, 35. Yeah, that, that seems about right. If it's, if, if it's fully, sp like, spadef invested, too, it could help tick a little bit, but... Like, that's just, that's one of the things that, like, first came to my mind. But usually, in, in a situation like this, you kind of just want to beat Bundle by being faster than it, which is not easy. Um, but you can, I mean, you could possibly do that with Scarf Hoopa, um, with getting, you know, like, Treads to plus one speed, uh, Gouging Fire with, like, one D-Dance up. But I definitely think this could be in a Spothra angle um for raging bolts uh just yeah run the speed boost protect cm um and then lumina crash is what it is and then uh like dazzling gleam the only thing that kind of stops that is tread so you're gonna want to make sure treads is kind of whittled down but you shouldn't have too much of a problem doing that this game uh i mean you do have a bundle you have a um slush rush bear tick um I mean, Archaladon can even body press it. It's dangerous because they can also body press you. But, you know, it's kind of the same situation both ways. Uh, Satitan, I think, can actually go absolutely stupid this game. Uh, if it were Terra, like Terra Electric, then it would be even better. Because then it just hits, you know, Treads, Alomomola. Uh, he doesn't have Terra on the Satitan, right? Yeah, no, he doesn't. But I wish he did for this oh, matchup. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, I, if he had Terra on the Titan, like, with, like, Terra Electric, that'd be so huge here. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't. But I think, I think there are ways that Raging Bolts can win, and I think, uh, the Lit Leos definitely have to bring some specific defensive pieces in order to not die to Bundle and Aspothra in Titan. Um, or even Bear Tick for that matter, but I do think that's in the, the Lit Leo's favor just based off of talent, um, and kind of who their roster has on it. So I'm kind of sticking at the same range, 55, 45, or like 60, 40, uh, for the Lit Leos there. And just, just for completion, it's sake, like Specs Bundle into Max Max AV Hariyama, 35 damage, which is still a ton of damage. It's still a ton for Max Max AV. Uh, yeah. but... Yeah, that's bundle for you. Alright, now we have the Uncertain Unknowns versus the Sydney Sylveons. So, looking at this one, right, we have, um, like, I see that Meow can go actually really dummy here. Um, if you just bring, I think, Clear Amulet can go really, really crazy. Uh, you ignore the Landorus Intimidate on the, on the swap in. Then you can just, like, triple axle and then kill it. Just offer it. Would be amazing. Um, can't really touch, uh, Terrapagos, but, I mean, hitting that with a flower trick or just anything maybe after its shell is broken could be really, really, really good here. Um, then, uh, Dragapult, obviously you hit it with knockoff, you hit it with, uh, triple axle, things like that. You also have one of the best Dragapult switch-ins in the game in Ting Lu. So, you do have that. Uh, do have to be careful about um, DNC. DNC setup is always a threat. Um, same with Terrapagos. I could see maybe some red card shenanigans or some just phasing shenanigans with Tinglu, Whirlwind, or um, you know something with Roar could, could be really helpful here. Um, or Encore for Disruption. I don't really know what gets that here. Um, but... As well as you're going to need to make sure you have something to break through Tentacruel and, um, and Sylveon. Um, 
for for Tinnacruel, I mean, Meowth can kind of do it, but not really. I'm looking more at something like Swampert hitting a really strong Earthquake, um, which looks like it goes great into almost uh, their entire team, except for like, you know, Gapdos and Landorus, but neither of them really want to take a Liquidation or a Surf or anything of that nature. Um, and then Sylveon, I think it's just going to have to be a whittle it down chip it sort of game maybe get hazards up a ting Lu, um and try to try to block them um try to block the terapago spin or tentacle spin or you know kill them before they can do that um so i think i think uh that the un the unknowns have um i want to say a little bit of an advantage even though i think sydney's team has the overall firepower um i'm just not seeing like outright on paper the the ways that um sydney's team wins i mean obviously you have you know dragapult which can d-dance you have terapagos which can calm mind you have you know zapdos who can be scarf and clean or can just be sd and then kill things that way um but like i'm not seeing anything that looks like super super overwhelmingly powerful into the unknowns team so when i see this so uh Sylveon's offensively, right? We look at the Uncertain Unknowns team, and we check. We see, okay, our the Steel is our main man. Fortress, the dragon yeah, is uh, the the poison is also a dragon. Um, spam Sylveon, and you can also spam Terra Fairy Delphox and just shoot Fairy moves at this team. Can't really do anything to it. Um, unknowns, because I just said that, you should probably bring Terra Poison and Cineroar. If you don't have that, they can really just spam, they can also just spam the normal moves at you. So you gotta bring the Ghost, and you gotta play it well, because Terrapagos, they can go Specs Terrapagos on you and just shoot attacks at you. Um, I don't even think, I don't even know if, if Sylveon's needs to set up the Terrapagos, like you just attack because uh, all their bulky mons, right? Like, say they switch in the Ting Lu, they switch in the Hatterene, even the uh, Swampert. We're faster than them. So we get an attack off on them and then another attack off on them. Um, Ting Lu against the Dragapult is tough. We can either just switch out and U-turn every time. We can run sub Will-O-Wisp. Uh, which, as long as we're behind the sub, we're not afraid of magic bounce, so if we're, like, sub Will-O-Wisp, Shadow Ball, U-Turn, that's quite a good set against this team, especially the Incineroar, if it comes, is kind of forced to tear a poison, so then we can burn it. So then we have a D, and if, if we get it wrong, and it's the, what's its name, the, uh, Zorar, we just U-Turn out, right? So I think that's a fine set. And also, if they bring, what's his name, uh, so they don't really want to bring either of these flying types. Like, they're fine, but I don't know. Like, maybe there's a... Like, we don't... You can bring the Kilowattril. It's fine in this game. But if it Terra's, we have no real Earthquake switch in, right? Because, like, Tinglu is a pseudo switch in, but... Run run Band uh, Landorus and just Earthquake. What are they going to do, right? You keep bringing it in on Tinglu. You bring it in on Slow Swamper. You bring it in on Incineroar. It's faster. You just Earthquake, right? Um, and then Zapdos, pr probably just a basic Scarf Zapdos game. Just keep clicking, like, U-turn until you know, like, the ghost is gone or whatever, or even just click flying move, right? Because if they bring the fortress, it's going to have to come in on a million attacks. It's not going to last very long. So that's what I would do if I was Sylveon. I feel like this is Sylveon, just attack. You have a speed advantage over everything, and you, you have a disadvantage against Meow. But Meow also, if it's not Scarf Meow, is eventually going to lose to Dragapult, right? So if you outlast them, it has to be Scarf or it can't beat your subset, which is what you're going to be running against Ting Lu. So um, what does Unknowns have to do? Unknowns needs to take advantage of the fact that they have a decent like Meow Skarada game and that I they have to do something... They have to be scarf on something really to like beat you, and they have to play well around your sucker punch, right? So either we're scarf meow, which if we feel like we need it, we need it, or we're like we could be boots, we could be expert belt, 
Uh, whatever we need to kill the Zapdos in one hit. Um, I don't know if it's worth it running like low kick for the Terrapagos. It probably doesn't do enough damage anyway, so we just U-turn on that. Um, can we deal with the setup? It also might just be a setup Diancie game because we can't really do that much to that. Like if we get one, if that thing gets one turn to set up and then shoots us with a diamond storm. So yeah, I don't, I feel like Sydney, uh, Sylveon's team, because it's so good, can just run these basic sets. Like you can come up with in five seconds and just devastate the unknowns team. So unknowns can win. I feel like, Maybe you bring both fast things, but I, what what I the problem I see with Unknown's team is this is where this speed gap comes in that I don't even have the list in front of me, but you can just tell. The Swampert, the Ting Lu, and the Incineroar all sit around this very middling speed, and these super powerful like 80 to 90 things like Landorus and Terrapagos can just, without any fear of these things getting over it, these things can't, they, they have to be able to switch in and take another hit. Because they're not switching in and then stopping two earthquakes in a row, right? Or two Terra Storm Star Storms. So that's what I think is going to be the issue, is this Zoroark is the only way to stop just Specs Terrapagos from running Unknowns over. And that's too much prediction for me, so I'll go 60-40 uh, Sylveons on this one. Yeah, I think... I think it it's definitely going to be close. Uh, if, Re if Unknowns can just you know, position the Miasco Rada really, really well and just play around their defensive pieces, like really well, which is a lot to ask. It is definitely very prediction reliant and, and things of that nature. But I, I think if they do that, they can, they have a pretty good chance at winning. But I do think that because of that, I think I do have to give the slight edge to Sydney at 55, uh, 45 as well for that. And so we will move on to number six, the King Keldeos versus Dallas Dynamax. Zog, go ahead and start us off. <sighs> okay, so Dallas Dynamax, we we made changes here, right? Yeah, we got Float Soul. We got Azum now. Okay. So King Keldeos has a much more balanced team. Uh, Primarina is very unfortunate for... Uh, my man, Suicune, old form. What's this guy's walking wake? Um, that's tough for walking wake. I, for my, for my memory, he cannot do anything to Primarina. Um, Floatzel, Appleton is an unfortunate thing for Floatzel. It makes it challenge. You, you can't run banned, right? Petron is also here, so we might, uh, might not be banned. Flo oh, it's not Terra Floatzel either. Okay. So Floatzel can come, but if we're bringing Floatzel here, we got to get more creative with the set. We might be special, honestly, here, which isn't a bad set. Gets around Petron. Uh, we can Ice Beam the, what's his name, Appleton. Um, we get Appleton against Rain, like against all these physical waters. Not great. Like, it's, it's a bad matchup for Dynamax because... The bug moves off of Araquanid, remember, don't get the boost from the ability, so it's not that strong. Like, without his boost, he's not strong. Um, we've been seeing in a lot of leagues, uh, you could do something interesting with Azum here. Um, you could, you could, don't underestimate the trapping set on Azu. So, like, I just gave you an example of how Appleton kind of stops you a little bit. Send Sap Sipper Azu out against this thing, Whirlpool it, and Parasong it. Just take it off. I kind of just ruined the trick. But maybe Keldeos won't watch this and know that's a set. Just be Sap Sipper Parasong. He can't beat it. You'll just remove it, and then you win with your rain Pokemon. Um, also, Hurricane Braviary. Very good in this game. In the rain, uh, Metagross not, not dealing with that. Um, you might not even need the Tinted Leads. You could probably probably run Sheer Force against him, and he's fine. Um, and then what are we doing against my man Low Kicks? Low Kicks is fine, but he's never really... you got to get rid of Tusk. If you can get rid of Tusk... Oh, we got Petra on here, too. Um, I'm trying to give Dallas Dynamax some ideas, but I feel like Keldeo should probably just win. Um, so we still have... Let me just check to make sure I'm right. 
We still have no natural ground type without the... Okay, Dallas Dynamax, bring Terra ground Araquidid because you're facing Reggie Alecki and Rain. They're about to run Thunder Reggie Alecki on you all day. Um, yeah, just based on that one thing, like you're facing Reggie Alecki with no ground in the rain. That's it. So that's that's my 70-30 right there. Like that's going to be tough. Um, you need AV Chestnut coming in hard right now. Um, and then you got Prim also powered up in the rain. So we got decent water resists. Um, our Moonblast resists. We still we have no actual steel, right? And we have uh, Grafai who has like 70 HP. So we're looking at specs. Uh, Primarina, just moon blasting. Yeah, Keldeo's 70 30 in this game for me. There's too much. It's too overwhelming for Keldeo's. So, one thing that I see right off the rip is Terra um, Dreadnought. I think that Terra Dreadnought, Terra Dark, after one shell smash, goes absolutely insane in this game. The only thing that can stop it is. Um, Primarina, you bring Strong Jaw, you Shell Smash, you Terra Dark, and then nothing eats a crunch that well, like at all. I guarantee Prim with like max HP probably still takes like 50, if I had to guess. So the one thing you're probably gonna need to do is um whittle down that Primarina. But after that, if you can position this Dreadnought well and get it into a spot where it won't die in one hit, you just Terra Dark or like save the Terra Dark until after you Shell Smash. But you, sh you slow shell smash, then you're faster than everybody, and then you just absolutely run the team with crunch. It's it it would be so insane if if that pull if that got pulled off. But on a real note, um, Araquinid does have. I mean, that's that's a real note. But to speak about the rest of the team, Araquinid does kind of have to be terra ground here. Um, and if it isn't, then Chestnut has to pull so much weight. Um, I do think low kicks can you can just send it in and just kind of click either scarf knockoff or banded knockoff and just kill things or not kill things but definitely break things. Um, you can break open Petron, you can get rid of Tusk's item, you can get rid of Prim's item. Uh, Cinderace takes a ton, Metagross takes a ton. Um, Reggie Alecki doesn't want to take nothing, really wants to take that hit, right? Um, and so low kicks can be the breaker in rain. Uh, I think wake. Kind of suffers a little bit because it can't be like basically both specs and scarf uh because of the sun boost um so you're gonna have to pick one or the other but uh i do think it can go pretty good here i think that prim is gonna have to try to be spadef to match the wake which means that that opens up like dreadnought and stuff you could also just try to trap the uh like prim with azu like like zal was saying earlier um i do think that braviary can be uh, it can go pretty crazy here with Tinted Lens. You can just click uh, Esper Wing, get that speed boost, and then just click Hurricane on things. Um, I do like Grafii as a little uh, support Pokemon. Being able to just come in, click Prankster Encore. Um, I've even done things where like I EV'd enough to kill a Primarina with Gunk Shot um, with enough attack IVs if it has like some chip done on it. Uh, so that's something that uh, could potentially be looked into. Um, but... I mean, yeah, otherwise, I think I think B has a really easy time with Reggie Lucky just being able to come in and just click electric moves. Um, and I think, like, something like Scarf Tusk could could be really, really good here. Even Banded Cinderace could be really, really good. Um, and so, I do think, I do think Petra is going to be a little hard to break through. Uh, but I, I do think Dallas has a lot more ways to win than what it might seem on paper. So I'm going to make it a little bit closer. I'm probably going to say 60, 40 in, um, the Keldeo's favor as I do think it is easier. But I think that, uh, that Dallas does have some kind of under the radar ways to just end the game in one turn. Yeah. Just so we know the numbers, so we know like why ground is so important against Reg Lecky. Full Spadef Chestnut takes 50 from Thunder. Off, off Reggie Lecky, like Choice Specs Thunder, so it can barely switch in. If it's and if it's AV, it can't it can't synthesis, right? Also, we kind of have negative synergy with synthesis as the rain, so <laughs> we really better bring we really better bring this ground. Uh, we got we got enough priority to where it wouldn't be like devastating because we couldn't keep staying in with low kicks and Azu, but yeah, that's tough. 
That's a tough. Also, Tech Keldios Electro Ball Cinderace KOs uh, Pelipper. Look it up. <laughs> All right, and with that, we move on to my game, which is one of our two Neon Game of the Weeks. We got me the St. Louis Solgaleos versus the Detroit Zoroarks. Um, Zah, go ahead and uh, go ahead and say what you think about this one. Make sure to write these down. Uh, okay. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't d don't say too much now. <laughs> I'll I'll be writing all, right. all this down just so you know. This is an interesting game because we have uh, some distinct advantages on both sides. Like they can do nothing to Blood Moon, so every time Blood Moon comes in, uh, we Blood Moon and just devastate something. Like maybe we're A V Scizor, which honestly I don't think it's a troll set. I think it's it might be necessary in this game, right? Blood Moon being two speed. I think Blood Moon is two speed over an Amorous Therian, which matters. Um, Blood Moon can probably get over Volcanion, because I think there's only an 18 speed difference between those two guys, which wouldn't be bad. Uh, it can get over Mandy Buzz. It can get over Scizor. Um, like, it can get over all of these slow things, and. The, the best value, I think, out of Blood Moon in general is it can... You tech it to get over their slow walls so that even if they switch in on you, or especially you pivot... Like, say, uh, in this game, let's say they have Mandy Buzz to check, even if it doesn't work, to check Zarud, right? And they're auto-switching in Mandy Buzz on Zarud. You tech Blood Moon to be just faster than, like, min speed or 10 speed Mandy Buzz... And you you turn into Blood Moon every time, and now it's a physical wall against your Blood Moon, and you just Blood Moon, and they can't do anything about it. And that gives Blood Moon value on like two health, so it can it can get its shots off against two or three things on the team, and then it takes out their walls, and then you win with the other guys. So Sogaleos has that benefit. On the downside, Blood Moon is like our only way to stop Spectre because our normal type is then weak to uh, Drain and Kiss. Right, and Zarud's fine, but we really want to use that offensively, so maybe we are AV Zarud this game. But again, that's still not really a switch. And we sub, we Willow Wisp it, we drain it. Like, oh, there's all kinds of sets. Like, Spectre is kind of a demon in this game. We're maybe locked into Scarf Gengar, no matter what we do. Um, real quick, uh, Zarud's Terra is slightly wrong. It's Poison Dark, not Poison Grass. Just so everybody yeah. keep that in mind. Um... We have de we have a uh, decent hazard removal if they want to go with the spike stacking Dio speed. If they want to go the end game Dio speed, three attacks, life orb. Uh, that's pretty good against the whole team if they just run the basic like nasty plot, psi shock or psychic ice beam thunderbolt. Like that's going to be something we're going to have to keep into consideration because if they break with Spectrier. And then have Dio speed at the end. That's going to be pretty devastating for the Sogaleos. They have to keep Empoleon very healthy for that possibility. That's probably what I would do if I was Detroit. Um, but on the other hand, like, what are they doing against Blaze again? Blaze can get a Swords Dance up and six O's the team again. Unless Gar, even if Garchomp's healthy, like it's got to be like max defense, like eighty plus percent health to take the CC. Especially if we're Life Orb or like Black Belt might be better this game. Black Belt. Uh, Tauros is okay. Like it's Intimidate, right? It was, this is basic Tauros, right? Just basic Tauros? Uh, yeah. Yes, basic Paldean Tauros. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't even have water. So we can just spam the, the fire moves with the opinion. So this is an interesting game because neither team defensively can really do like that much. Like Zapdos in theory is good against Garchomp, but we could, you know, we could, you can always do something with Garchomp, right? Like it has the rock moves. It could be annoying. It's just faster naturally. So it gets over it if Zapdos doesn't invest speed, but then if Zapdos invests speed, it doesn't have bulk. Um, I think Mandy Buzz is too passive this game. So Detroit's uh, defensive Pokemon, it only has one like dedicated defensive Pokemon and like Mandy Buzz is classically uh too passive it's also a really free switch into empoleon if it doesn't u-turn so if it tries to toxic something or brave bird something or foul play we go into empoleon we tech empoleon to be slower and then we flip turnout after they u-turn on us so we retake the momentum 
Um, so this is a tough game. I'm going to go 50-50 on this game because I just think it's whoever builds better. Like there's no, both players have some distinct advantages, but um, it's just as simple as saying, okay, if Spectre gets set up behind the sub, it wins. If Blaziken gets one turn, it pretty much wins. Uh, so I think both sides just like try to, imp Soul Glares tries to, s to get rocks off with his free turns with Empoleon. Detroit tries to like blow a hole early with something, whether it's either they need to blow a hole either with Spectre or Dio Speed and then finish with the opposite. That's what I would do. And it's just whoever executes their like offensive Pokemon better because we have no defense. This is this is the no defense game. Like this is a this game will be over in like ten turns. Like this is not going to be a long game. I one hundred percent agree. And so with the last game, our last game of the week. Um, we have the Ottawa Don fans versus the Boston Bay Bets. So looking at this, um, Ottawa dropped backs, crazy move, picked up Weavile and Clefable, um, which I think gets some desperately needed speed. Uh, and it's a really good speed tier at that. I almost want to say it might be a little too high for what they want to do, but I think it's, I think it's still fine. Um, and so, uh, looking at Weva, I think it, it has some niches here. Like it can help with Roaring Moon. It can help with Gliscor. Otherwise, I don't think it really does all that much. Like it can knock off Jirachi. Like that's, that's cool. Um, I think this is mostly going to have to rely on like a Scarf Dragon breaking holes into the team. Um, maybe something like, I don't know, Fizdef Iron Hands to help take care of, uh, Roaring Moon. Um, then, like, I'm trying to, I'm struggling to find some answers for Annihilate. Annihilate can kind of just, like, bulk up and kill things, um, with some Spadef to maybe live, like, a, a, a Scarf, um, Dragon, like, Dark Pulse or something, um, or just make sure that Dragon is dead first, but I think that, like, the Baybets team with just, uh, like speed um being able to break uh holes open easier um like hazard stacking make sure that dawn fan gets that sturdy broken early with like a u-turn or something um but i think i think the baybets have the pressure in to keep up on the dawn fans that if if the dawn fans don't find a way to like break that um that they will be in a a world of uh of trouble it, yeah if they can't stop that so i'm gonna give this like 60 40 in uh in in the Baybet's favor. So we talked about in the previews that Babets doesn't have much special offense. The benefit of that is it makes Glow King not really that important in this game. Because we don't really have special attackers that they want to spam. Um Annihilate, if you don't attack it, I think that Clefable and Milotic are fine. Like, unaware Clefable can always switch in on the Annihilate if it hasn't been attacked. Um, you So, Babette's probably needs Taunts, Annihilate to stop that. Or we need to run Milotic with speed to get over Annihilate, and then we just don't attack and we keep hazing its boosts. Uh, which would be annoying, but I'm pretty sure Milotic will stall it out at that point. You just run Fizz Def Milotic. It's not great, but both of those strategies will work. Uh, so, but you have to never attack the Annihilate, which I think is the best strategy against Annihilate. Just don't attack it until you're ready to kill it. Um, we're okay against Moon. Again, you pretty much have to have Unaware Clefable, especially after what Babettes did with Roaring Moon, which then, if, like, if I'm Babettes, I'm probably just choice ban Moon in this game. Like, there's not really a reason not to be. Because you're always losing to the Ice Shard anyways. Like, Banned Ice Shard probably just kills Moon outright from Weavile. Like, straight up from full. Um, hands probably taking something with him. Like, I don't know. We don't, like... If we're full, like, Fizz Def, Terra Fairy, uh, Blob Guy, whatever the Blob Guy's name is. Um, uh, Belly Bolt? Or... No, the other blob guy. Electro? Reuniclus. 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 Oh. 
Um, yeah, if we're Terra Fairy Reuniclus, that's fine against hands, like if it's not set up. Uh, Ottawa might want to th like throw out the legendary booster attack SD hands this game, because that's going to do something. If that comes out, it's doing something in this game, because Gliscor is not killing that in one hit, and, you know, we're going to be Ice Punch. We're Ice Punch, Drain Punch, and honestly, that's probably all that we need. We could be EQ also, right? Um, and that's pretty devastating into this whole team. Um, if we're it's a hand set with booster attack, SD, drain punch, ice punch, and then coverage move of choice, like if you think you need play rough for ape, or you'd rather have EQ for Jirachi and the bird, then that's your choice. But that'll do something. Like you lead that, and if Babets isn't ready, that's getting two, three kills. Um, so that's their best set, probably. So I agree, you try to do something with Hydreigon. Uh, does Hydreigon have Earth Power? Am I making that up, or do they have that? Um, they have that. They have two. Here. They have Earth Power, right? And Flash Cannon. Yeah. So they do have Fez Earth Power. A bad, Fez is a bad matchup for uh, Hydreigon. I guess again, Terra. So we need Terra Steel Hydreigon. If you're going to bring it, just bring Terra Steel, because Fez is tough. Um... Jirachi can probably do some stuff. Um, to my eye, I, I do feel like Ottawa has some good sets. Like, Hands is tough. Hands is tough this game. Like, we can't do that much against it, especially if it's set up. Um, I don't know. Again, the, the, the this is where we see the downside of a Betts team is not having the, a, a ton of special offense. It means there's really no reason to bring AV Hands. You can just run like booster attack hands you could run booster defense hands with ice punch coverage and just body press like you could do all kinds of interesting stuff with that um we also because we have uh moon as the dark resist you know the, the spamming ghost moves is fine against this team um because moon doesn't want to constantly be switching in not that it can't it just doesn't really want to uh but with that being said, I, I still like Babets. I feel like Babets can win easier, and there's a lot of dangerous situations for Don fans. So if they do happen to bring a dedicated moon check, like Clef like unaware Clefable to stop DD Moon, if Babets just gets an early lead and forces the Clefable in on, say, uh, the Annihilate, if it starts setting up and then that's gone, then we have an easy win con with Moon. But Bet's team just has so many win cons that are relatively easy to set up. Like just those top two, and even the we didn't see it week one, but Reuniclus, we have Terra Reuniclus here. Which again, if it's if it's set up, that's another thing the Clefable would have to come in and check, which it's gonna just get worn too thin. So I'm gonna go Babets. Uh I'm gonna go 55-45 though, because I low-key think Don fans iron hands is getting two, three kills, pretty much no matter what we do. So we just got to do sh activities before or after that happens. Yeah. And so with that, that is the Neon Week 2 Pick'ems. And uh, we'll be back next week with some uh, power rankings. We, we're gonna, I think we're going to alternate every other week. We're going to maybe try to get Pick'ems out every week. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but with that, that's it, baby. See you all next time. Peace. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Halloween.